On Can I Meet You right now, we're joined by Scott Tinker with the University of Texas, and uh, you're one of the moderators here. Tell us a little bit about the session that you oversaw. Yeah, it was a group of folks representing uh, the technology side of the business, geophysics, engineering, geosciences, as well as some of the managerial side. So these guys run companies, and they've built big companies around this unconventional resource. So their experience is invaluable to the attendees here as to not only what they see coming technologically, but how you go about building a company around that. Mm -hmm. So you've been involved in the oil industry for quite some time, and you've been head of organizations as well. What did you hear at this session that stuck out for you? Yeah, I was in the oil and gas industry about 17 years, and I found too much water. So that qualified me to be a professor. Okay. <laughs> Not enough oil. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. And I've been there 14 years, so pretty much half and half now. So some common themes, maybe not surprising, but that are important is integration, teamwork, um, partnerships, uh, collaboration, the kinds of things that are critical when you're dealing with really complicated reservoir systems, rocks and fluids, complicated economics, and environmental challenges. So it all has to come to bear to work. Mm -hmm. And that was extremely well emphasized today. One of the catchwords these days seems to be sustainability. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on that when it comes to the industry? Yeah, sustainability is an important word. Um, I always ask people what their time term is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get a blank look. What do you mean time term? I say, well, sustainable for how long? Mm -hmm. Oil's been sustainable for a century. Um, it's transitioning slowly down in percentage. So um, nothing is forever. And so sustainability, it's critical that we look at, at that time term. I think the industry here um, offers a lot to that in a sense of a transition from carbon-based fuels to non-carbon-based fuels. Uh, oil and coal being the most heavy carbon, natural gas, a lot more hydrogen than carbon, mm -hmm. and then into less carbon-based fuels. So I think there's a big role to play from providing still 80 to 85% of the world's energy from this industry and doing things environmentally sensitive, multiple wells from a single pad, reusing and recycling the water, um, perhaps not using water at all in the future. The kinds of strategies that are needed to make the environmental impacts minimal and still be able to produce the product that people are demanding. Right. Because it's not just sustainability of the oil and gas, it's sustainability of the environment that it comes from. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And sustainability of the economy that it all drives. Mm -hmm. So I have this speech I give for many years and have written about called the waltz of the three E's. Energy, the environment, and the economy. Okay. And they dance together. Economies are underpinned by energy. Six of the last seven global recessions have been preceded by a spike in the price of oil. Mm -hmm. Correlation is not causation, but it underpins. Healthy economies let you invest in the environment. So you can't go too far out in one of those E's without hurting the other ones. You got to stay in a pretty delicate balance there. You have just finished, or I guess a short time ago, finished a documentary that you did on the oil industry called Switch. Tell us a little bit about that. It's actually on the whole energy industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's not oil and gas. We looked at coal, nuclear, hydro, all the renewables. We went to 11 countries, the best sites in the world for each of them, mm -hmm. and looked at the pros and cons of each of them very objectively. And what you see is this transition and this switch, if you will, the, the transition from carbon-based to non is going to take some time. Very expensive, resources that we're used to, technology changes are slow, but it's happening and can be done in a way that, again, doesn't hurt the economy, but perhaps uh, accelerates more quickly than some of the things if you just stayed locked in in the present. Mm -hmm. While you were doing this, did you uncover some issues, I guess, that you perhaps were not aware of before? Yeah, I think the biggest one, and it's an E we haven't talked about, is efficiency. Mm -hmm. The energy that we don't use by being more efficient in the way we use energy, and across the board we can do better. Mm -hmm. From lighting to insulation to vehicles, et cetera, we can do better. And using less energy won't change your lifestyle much, if at all, but just recognition of how important energy is and then using less in our daily lives and that big E is critical in that long-term transition. That almost seems to be directed more towards North America I guess than almost anywhere else isn't it? Um, Europe to a certain degree but 
Well, in part, although the developing economies uh, who use less per capita today are developing in much the same way that the developed economies did 100 years ago. A lot of coal, a lot of oil, um, you know, technologies that are better, but could be better still. So it's really a global challenge. The OECD nations, the developed nations, and the developing nations coming together to make sure that those transitions happen differently than they have in the last century. So is your documentary then geared towards everybody or more geared towards the oil industry to let people, what well, energy en industry, to let them know where it's going? Yeah, it's geared away from the energy industry. Mm -hmm. It's an education piece for the public because the public doesn't understand much about in energy today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see a dozen cooking shows on TV and everything else, but what do you really know about energy? And we found the public doesn't know much and it's so critical to our lives. So the documentary is guilt geared toward the public. Scott, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. We've been chatting with Scott Tinker here on Can I Media.